somebody's got Trent and Krim hair and my beard is out of control. So that's where we are. Just make that happen. Trent Krim, the independent. We we start the show now. Cool. We do show, right. we do show. Cool. With my welcome, fantastic welcome. Trent Krim hair. Well, welcome production crew to the mildly interesting people production meeting. This is where we let you in behind the scenes. We test drive new concepts and content. You get to find out things ahead of time, like maybe who our next guest is for May the 4th. Be with you. Um, all kinds of stuff, because you're part of the crew. You're part of this whole production. And so we want to be as transparent with you as we possibly can be. So we do the mildly interesting yeah. questions. Then we get into the production meeting where we, again, share behind the scenes, uh, talk through. We're, we're starting to share stats just so we can kind of keep track week to week, uh, talk through any other production notes we have, and then then we're out. And it's a, hopefully, even though you didn't bring the snacks you were supposed to bring, hopefully an enjoyable experience for everyone involved. Now it's time for my least favorite part of the production meeting. So let's get into it. Mildly and my interesting part. questions for Rick. All right, Rick, I've got five mildly interesting questions from you. As I think is for me. what, yeah, what did I say? You said from me and I didn't want people to be confused. Mm, I did not create the questions apparently for I myself. Can't, apparently I can't English on the boarding either. Uh, as is... Oh, I know where I was getting the from. As I believe is my new tradition, I'm going to kick off the question round with a production crew question. Cool. Spike is it from Spike? Is it it's Spike's not. question? Oh. It is not. I'm sorry. It is from Mahesh. So what? Yeah. Mahesh Spike. sent in a question. He he was. I think he was worried that I was running low on questions, so he sent me a few more. All right. Cool. Yep. Question number one. Were okay. you in a military family growing up? You mentioned you moved a lot. Yes. Would you like to expand on that? <laughs> Not really. Yeah. Okay. okay. No. No. All you don't right, have fine. to. No. That I, it, it was. It was a yes or no question. But the. Uh, it fact was. The matter, but... Fact of the matter is, I was an army brat. I was born in scenic Fort Huachuca, Arizona, outside of Tucson. Arizona, and then um, lived there for a few years. My dad had several tours in Vietnam, which will tell you how old I am. And while he was away on one of his tours, we were in Twin Falls, Idaho, because my mom had grown up there. She wanted to go home where she was, you know, familiar with things. Then we were in oh, scenic Fort Bliss in El Paso, Texas. <laughs> Where, so sorry. I'm so sorry. Yeah. So yeah, we could see the Juarez Bridge. It was great. Like uh, there, there was that one Christmas where the lawn was dead and tumbleweeds were rolling through the yard. It was great. No offense to people who love El Paso. I just didn't enjoy it there that much. Then I was in Stuttgart, Germany at Robinson Barracks for four and a half-ish, five-ish years. And then my folks got divorced. So no more moving around for me with the army thing. And then my dad retired a couple of years later. So uh, he wound up moving to, uh, what was the name of the Fort Stewart, which is in uh, Hinesville, Georgia, Reedsville, Georgia. It's in Georgia. And so he was there and then retired and then did other unscrupulous and unsavory things <laughs> that we won't discuss. That may okay. or may not have been legal. <laughs> just I don't want the Dixie Mafia coming after me, so we'll just we'll we'll, we'll say leave it that. that we'll leave leave it at that. Uh, I will not. Spike, be, uh, Spike is unhappy with my father's unscrupulous activities. He is. Spike is a law-abiding cat. You're very grumpy and quite sedate. How do you deal so well with my overly sunny disposition? Uh, as the Famous philosopher Paula Abdul once said, opposites <laughs> attract, or maybe that was MC Scat Cat. I don't know, but the, either way. I think she said it, too. and MC Scat Cat was just getting down, so. Yeah, 
Yeah. Excellent. So I, I mean, I think that's, that's the, I don't know how you, it's honestly easier to deal with you than you having to deal with me. Mm-hmm. You're just grumpy. It's not a big deal. <sighs> oh my God. You got so grumpy when I said that. Just get on with it. Let's go. Number three. What yes. is your most, what is your most frequently consumed beverage? Coffee. Like, I think I drink more coffee than anything else. Because that is like, that's like every single day I go through a pot of coffee at least. Yes. Often too. Often too. But I would say coffee is, is it. Okay. Which is why I have so much energy and vigor and vim. Yes. That's why you're so, such a sunny disposition and high energy. Uh, cool. Question number four. What three herbs or veggies or fruit, doesn't matter, will we plant this season? Oh, interesting. I would like, I like tomatoes off the, off the vine. They don't have to be, they could be just beef steak standard tomato-y kind of things. They don't have I'd to at be least like fancy. To, I'd like to have, okay, continue. This is your question. Heirloom, heirloom tomato. Um, I just like to make, I love tomato sandwiches during the summer. That's like one of my favorite things. Um, so tomatoes would be one. We use an awful lot of like, we use an awful lot of orego, orego. We use a lot, a a lot of orego. (laughs) We use oregano. Oregano. We, we use a lot of oregano. So maybe that, but I'm probably thinking basil because like basil's better fresh, like oregano, you generally mm. dry it. So let's do tomato, basil, and then can we plant a mozzarella plant just so that we have caprese salad? That would be great. That'd be what fantastic. About a balsamic vinegar plant. You want to do grapevines? No, I don't. That That's, that what, that's like how you get nightmare. balsamic vinegar, so... You want balsamic vinegar? Because that's how you get balsamic vinegar. <laughs> um, I get it so, from the store, to be fair. I'm not making my third, own balsamic. Third, I'm thinking... Like, a lot of people do, like, cucumbers or zucchini, but I'm not really a huge fan. I mean, I, they're fine. I just... Do, we don't go through a lot of them. Like, we go through a lot of tomatoes. We go through a lot of basil. Uh... What about like a pepper of some sort? Like, does it get dry enough here for us to do a pepper of some kind? And I'm not talking a bell pepper, like a spicy pepper. No, I think we just have to grow it in the same area that we have to find the sunniest spot and put it with the tomatoes. So a pepper is great. Okay, cool. <gasps> we could, could we grow we can poblanos? Do our, we could do our own hot sauce. Oh, poblanos aren't really hot enough for hot sauce. But if we did poblan pub Poblanos, then I could make my green goddess dressing with the fresh basil and yeah, the but fresh then we, poblanos. Then we need a cojita cheese plant. A mozzarella. I don't know if we have room for a mozzarella plant and a cojita cheese plant. Yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. All right. So. You're right. You're right. All right. Uh, what is n- number five? We're ready. Wait, we're already at five? Um, You're very grumpy. Coffee. Things, cool. the plant. Yeah, we're at five. Mm-hmm. This has been easy this week. I was trying to be kind to you. This Thank one should you. be easy it. too. Why do you hate rhododendron? <laughs> Look, I know Portland's supposed to be like this rhododendron y place. There's a goddamn rhododendron garden like a couple miles away. Uh, I just, the, I think this is it. Okay, if there's one thing I can get to, it's I realize flowers are generally just visually beautiful. But like if a flower doesn't have a I would much rather have an ugly flower with a pleasing scent than a beautiful flower with no scent. Like it's the same reason I hate. uh, I'm totally going to forget the name of the thing now that we always used to have as a kid not gardenia anyway gardenias are similar but like i i don't star jasmine no no the it's uh i can see it 
like in my head, it's like, it's cauliflower. It's not cauliflower, you dipshit. Cauliflower is unflowered things. It's so, a vegetable. Uh, anyway, it's not a chrysanthemum. Anyway, so I like flowers that both are pretty, but also smell nice. But I also love like Daphne, which has such a mm. like strong aroma, but the flowers are, they're fine but they're not they're like super compelling flowers. But they so smell amazing. It's, I love, I love the fact that rhododendron is an evergreen bush that survives and remains green throughout the year. I'm just not a fan of the flowering. So okay. that's why, I, that's why I don't like them. Sorry to all you rhododendron fans out there and sorry to the city of rhododendron. I like you just fine. There's a it's city. The bush. Yeah, rhododendron, Oregon. Come on. Huh. Keep up, Cammy. All right, those were my five questions. Well, my four questions and my is one question, but yeah. yeah. Sorry for that noise. Yeah, sorry for scraping. All right. Sorry for party rocking. Uh okay. So now it's time for <laughs> now it's time to not do that and instead Cammy, rather than dancing and singing, will answer questions that what are if, mildly interesting. And they're what if one me. of the questions is about party rocking? No, there's not that. Why? Why are you sorry for party rocking? Shouldn't <laughs> you be into that? Sorry for party rocking. Oh, I'm so sorry. <sighs> Rennie, Rennie will love this episode. He played that goddamn shuffling song constantly. Every day the first I'm shuffling. And he would sit there. He had a stand-up desk, and so he'd sit there and shuffle while he was watching it. It was ridiculous. That no, was when, like we were that on the pla- when we were on the platform, like studio. So the platform C would make whatever that would was. make yeah. all the noise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a mistake, by the way. We should have never separated the staff from the startups going through the program. So if you're building an accelerator, make sure the staff is in the thick of it because you need to be in the same space as the startups. Just I mean, they were in the same space. It was just separated off. It was just we like were a, we we were platform like elevated. They put and themselves like in a corner on a pedestal. Yes, we did, and but it was in a corner too. Like yeah. we were trying. We thought, let's get out of the way and let the startups do yeah. their thing. But fact of the matter is, it made us kind of unapproachable. So we. But it made a them. great stage for bands. It did. It was perfect for bands. This part of my beard is growing nuts. Right. My Trent Krim hair is getting flat. Yeah, How does he keep that volume? Product. I'm gonna talk to. I'm gonna talk to. Dry shampoo. He's a dry shampoo guy. If I've ever. I bet seen you one. he is. I bet you he is. I have some new dry Most shampoo. So is. yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm definitely time taking mildly, Nick a lot of picture time, of Trent Krim. And... As we like to call it in the biz, the MIQ. Is that what I'm we call the, it? I don't know. It's mildly right. interesting questions. I like. I feel like I need to have something in my hands. I'm very anxious. I'm very nervous. All right, get get your polka dotty pen or something. Aha! Uh-huh. Are you ready? Yes. All right. Here we go. What is your very most favorite landmark in the United States? It can be historical too. It doesn't have to be current. Like if it's the pines of Cambria Pines, that's fine too. Can it be Haystack Rock? Is that a landmark? Sure. Yeah, it's, that's a landmark. It's, it's it's Haystack Rock. Cool. Good answer. Uh, for folks who aren't familiar with Oregon or the Pacific Coast, uh, Haystack Rock is this massive uh, piece of rock, rock land, <laughs> land and rock that uh, sits off the coast of Cannon Beach, which is and a, has a couple of smaller but also very large rocks with it, and it's just yes. It's a sight to behold when you can when you come up to the coast and you see the giant rock and yeah, and you're coming birds. down the highway and you're like, oh, we're at the beach because there's yeah. there's Haystack Rock. Okay, good, cool, good answer. Uh, <clears throat> and there's some explanation with this one, maybe after you answer it. Okay. Uh, we often talk about zombie apocalypse kind of stuff here, so. Cammy, you're in a post-apocalyptic world. Would you rather live comfortably underground but struggle for food and sustenance or live uncomfortably above ground but be well-fed? 
Am I safe from zombies in either? Underground is probably safer. I just don't see why the two have to be mutually exclusive, but... Um, well, where are you going to get animals and stuff underground? You can have tunnels that go up up above. No, you but cannot also, go above ground. You're underground. Did the government prepare for this in advance and build, like, giant things with plant lights and stuff? I'm glad you asked, because... I just noticed on Apple TV, there's a new show coming out called Silo that is a post-apocalyptic thing where people live in like a missile silo. And it looks kind of like it reminded me a lot of like when you unplug from the Matrix and you're in that town mm -hmm. kind of thing. But it looked it's called Silo. It looks like right up your alley. I'm not sure I'm going to be into it, but I want to be sure you are aware because I have. I'm not aware. Mention, I had not I... heard you mention it yet. No. And so, Silo, Apple TV premiering Friday. Wow. Okay. Well, we're watching that. And then you can choose not to continue watching it if you're not into it. But well done, knowing my taste. I think as my, this is a really difficult one because I. Well, I don't suffer from seasonal depression. I'm an Oregonian who loves the cloudy mm -hmm. weather. I love yep. outdoors. Even if I choose to spend all of my time indoors. Yep. I think I'd rather be slightly uncomfortable above ground unless it's hot. If it's hot, I want to live underground. Um, now, no, I think um, it's like this the, is too I, difficult. It's kind of like you're always moving. You're trying to stay alive. Like, but there's yeah. plenty of like you can forage. There are animals. There's all that kind of stuff. Or you're in a bunker and you can't get out because it's unsafe to go above ground. I think I'm in a bunker. Okay. I don't know. That one is really challenging, and it's like six of one, half dozen of the other kind of thing. Yeah, it really is. I, could, I don't think I could be cooped up. I think I would go yeah. shit. I think I just, I, I were like, uh, not being cooped up, I would obviously die sooner. I'm not like, I am not in fantastic physical shape. I am currently using a cane to walk. <laughs> it's a Darwinian thing. Like, it is. You don't deserve to survive. Yeah. So yeah, my, my current answer is in a bunker because I am naive enough to think that I could find a way to like install grow lights and have a, I mean, I'd have to be a vegetarian. But or you could eat uh, bugs like on that train movie. Crickets, crickets, nutty when you toast them. Snowpiercer, where they at the bug candy all the time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I was. I almost asked a Chris Evans question this time, and he's in Snowpiercer. He oh, is in Snowpiercer. Right. Uh, two down. The movie, not that they made a TV show. He's in the movie. I did. I know. I never watched the TV show, so uh, neither did I. I just know it exists. Let's go. That's so weird that you and I never watched the TV show. Mm -mm. All right. So, question three, and this ties into again. We have a special episode coming up May the fourth. This be with you may or may not be a topic of conversation, depending on how I edit the thing but i'm thinking it will be because it was a pretty good chunk and our guest is awesome so uh this this kind of throwback to, I, this was already in my list but when we had that conversation i was like you plucked it you're like mm, here we go hackers or war games you have to pick one wow war games huh why for me, hackers is all about the personalities, right? It's all like, it's about the people that are in it. It's about seeing them in their younger selves. Um, mm -hmm. The technology isn't necessarily particularly well done. War Games was the first time that I, as a child, watched something. And I don't think I understood what empathy was at the time. But War Games was the first time that I had empathy for a computer. Huh. Um, and it remained part of me. Uh, it was a, it was a, I think it was a formational movie for me. Cool. Yeah. I was just trying to think through, like, I love both of those movies dearly. I do too. I, th I think I can, I think I do watch Hackers 
more often and probably quote hackers more often than I do war games, but war games is a hard watch. It's not an, it's not necessarily an it's not shining. light, lighthearted watch like hackers right. is. So um, I also watch hackers more frequently, but I, if I had to choose between the two, I would take being able to watch war games every 10 years over being yeah. able to watch hackers every month. Cool. So this new segment is kind of like, why do you hate? Okay. Blah, blah. But I don't know why I just composed this as a Seinfeld <laughs> phrase. Okay. Question. Okay. All right. Maybe it's because I. I is this number reading... four or number five? This is four. Okay. So I've, I've been reading this book that's basically Seinfeld's workbook for like figuring out his uh, jokes. Okay. And so that could, maybe that's influencing me. I don't know. Um, what's the deal with peas? Okay. We're going to get into some childhood trauma. If that's okay with you. <laughs> sure. uh, it's, I'm going to, we're going to get into it, whether it's okay with you or not. <laughs> Fine. So the question. a little bit of history. Um, I, until, I don't know, seven years ago or so, I hated peas so much that I would puke if they got in my mouth. It was just horrifying. Um, and I have, I still don't like pea. Like if I get fried rice and someone puts peas in it, I will sit and pick every single pea out because they're sad. Uncle Roger is right in this case. Peas and fried rice taste like sad to me. Mm -hmm. They're too round. I don't like the way they feel in my mouth at all. It's awful. I, I'm fine eating a pea in a pod. I'll, I'll eat pea pods. If, I, if I'm growing pea pods, I'll take a snap a sugar pea off the vine and mm, 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 eat it. Yum, mm -hmm. yum. Um, and I have recently, and by recently, I mean like seven years ago, discovered mushy peas where I do peas, butter, goat cheese, and a little bit of like super finely minced mint and salt and smash it up and eat it. And I think they're the most delicious things. But until I discovered this form of eating mushy peas, the only time I ever ate a pea and liked it was at a fancy restaurant. When I took my daughter to see Phantom of the Opera, we went, we had like a mommy daughter date and we went and had like mm -hmm. high-end meal and there were peas in my food and it was so good. And I actually ate it. I made my daughter take a picture of me so that we could commemorate me eating peas. But the fact was of the matter pasta? is... pasta? What was it that had peas in it? I think it was a gnocchi. Oh, okay. Yep. Um, and so when I was a child, it was very much the you eat what's on your plate uh, growing up. And no one mm -hmm. was more strict about this than my grandparents on both sides, strangely enough. Uh, and my dad's parents really needed to make sure I would eat the damn peas. And my grandfather would not let me leave the table unless I ate them. Um, and at one point he was just like, put them in your mouth and you're not leaving the table until they're all gone. And I put them in my mouth and I tried to chew them, but they were round and they tasted bad. And like my grandmother was not a good cook. She made this amazing, made this potato dried beef cheddar casserole. That is one of my favorite things ever. Mm. And that's the only thing she made that I really liked, but not the peas. And so I think, threw up all of the peas that I had put in my face and mostly they were just like kind of chewed, but some of it was vomit all over the table. Hmm. And, you know, no one made me eat a pea after that. So, <laughs> so it was effective. Solved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I also never wanted to eat a pea after that. And so, yeah. And, and uh, my partner is an amazing cook. And I think sometimes when he's making something like a chicken pot pie and I'm still like, no, you can't put peas in that. Peas taste like sad and chicken pot pie. I'm sorry. They do for me. I don't want a yucky or yum. I want all of you to enjoy peas wherever you want to, but I still can't handle peas and chicken pot pie. Huh. It makes what the entire were, chicken pot were, pie. What if they were smushed? I don't know. It makes the entire chicken pot pie taste like peas to me. And I don't, uh, I like to have all the distinct flavors. I still have a little bit of pee issue. <laughs> huh. Now it's taking me AP. back to that that conversation we had <laughs> the before. The pee like conversation. Sometimes, sometimes when you laugh or sneeze, sneeze. Um, <laughs> you know, have you had a child? This will happen. So, uh, cool, good answer. Last one. I like Last your one. framing. I like the framing of that. If 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 
because I do have a thing with a lot of stuff, I, mm -hmm. I will admit. So if we introduce a Rick, why do you hate and Cammy? what's the thing with? I think that's charming. Cool. Awesome. Good production note for the production meeting. Nice work. I'll save it. I'll write the down. Right. No, that's fine. That down? Just, okay. No, we've covered it. So okay. uh, the last question, question number five of mildly interesting questions for Cammy. This one could be challenging. Or it could if be I have like to remember one of, people's names. I'm going to be fucked. Just settle down. It's okay. like this is I. This is either going to be like, ooh, I don't know. I need to think about that, or it's going to be like the weird where I'm like, oh, she's not going to be able to decide between Wallace Wells and Roman Roy, and you're like, man, that's just the answer. So, okay, are you ready? I am. I'm intrigued. This is all surrounding a single actor. So just giving people context, Cammy will understand it off the top of her head, but just for you, production crew, I want to make sure you feel comfortable with the question I'm asking. So Cammy, are you ready? I am ready. Production crew, okay. are you ready? Everybody's ready. ready. You have to pick a bodyguard who will be your constant companion and the only person in your life that you are ever able to get into deep conversations with. That's the context. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Is it Neo, Jack Traven, John Wick, or is it Ted? Neo, Jack, Ted, or... John Wick. John. Deep conversations it's have the, to hang the, out with them all the, the time. Like here's they have the to thing. be a bodyguard too. They have to. That's be a bodyguard the thing. Too. If it was just yeah. the deep conversations, it honestly would be Ted. Um, <laughs> of course, it would. Yes, <laughs> because but how protective can Ted but, be? Yeah, these are all I Keanu think, Reeves characters, by the way. If you don't know, these are obviously. Keanu I think Reeves. I've got to go with. I have to go with John Wick. Huh? He doesn't seem like much of a conversationalist. I think it's. I, I think he's not much of a conversationalist because we see him in fight or flight action mode. Do you think he's a really good listener? Maybe he just sits around and listens to people. Uh, and I actually, genuinely, I don't know Keanu Reeves. I've never met him, but he seems like a really good listener. Yeah. Cool. Uh, and so, yeah, I do think that John Wick seems like a really good listener. So, of the Keanus, you're going of to those pick four the, Keanu the characters. latest, the latest Keanu. The latest Keanu. Yes, the John yeah. Wick, most cool. recent Keanu. Well done. Um, Jack Traffin is too copy for me. He's just such a cop. Yeah, but he's like, he uh, he seemed very empathetic. He did seem very empathetic, but he's just such a cop. Yeah, that's fair. And then Neo, yeah. like, that enters me into having to be in this whole other world where I'm probably plugged into a feeding tube somewhere, and that just is upsetting. So, no, not necessarily. I, you I, could be in the you could be in the 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 place where nah, you're well, I'm still I'm sticking with Jack. I mean, with what is John. that place called? There's like some. We are still here. Yeah, whatever. I can't. I, my brain is mush this morning. I'm standing like, by my John answer. I can't speak English. I can't remember flowers or can you speak german right now things nine um, <laughs> that's funny because he did just speak german <laughs> get it it's a joke um okay so uh, i have checked off your five questions they have been submitted to the mildly interesting question archive as okay. always production crew if one of those questions you're like that was a really good question that would be a good one for guests which i don't really see many maybe the landmark could be interesting the landmark one's a good one <clears throat> but beyond that those were very or hackers or war games could be good for guests too the, but that was would have been a great question for our upcoming guest yes would you would you like to reveal that as we begin the production meeting is can i yeah the the production meeting has officially started so please talk about our may the 4th star wars day guest so we wanted to do another special, like you can sit and type along with us for May the 4th because we had so much fun with the 420 episode, but we thought we should have someone really special because Star Wars Day is super important to us. And we don't know any of the actors or writers from Star Wars, uh, but we do have this one friend. His name is BDJ or Brian David Johnson, who is 
like, you know, you've got that one friend who is too smart and like too talented and can like just do anything and is still like the nicest person, you know, Uh, that's BDJ. So he is a multi-time published author. He's a a, right sci-fi fiction. He's written a self-help book uh, with the future being the premise for everything. He's a futurist. Mm -hmm. He's a lecturer. He is like a governmental advisor. He's a professor. Arizona State. Um, And so, and he's a complete, oh, is that the same college that Mitch went to? Yes, that's the same oh, college that Mitch always I talks helped, about. I helped with one of his, one of his futurists was doing a project on long COVID. Oh, that's and right. I, yeah. And I worked with her on it. And that was, was it fantastic. her thesis or was I it? I believe it was, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, we're having Brian on the show. In addition to all of those other things, he's just a giant nerd. Mm-hmm. He loves sci-fi. He loves Star Wars. And it was just yeah. a really great time to bring him on. So I hope. You guys will all join us on Thursday. Guys, folks, all of you will join us yep. on Thursday yep. for what was one hell of a great conversation. It's like, it, I hope it's not boring for it you, was, but it was so like, fantastic was, to record. Yeah, I didn't even, like, I think they had to, both Brian and Cammy had to go, <laughs> Rick, would you like to ask a question? Because I was just sitting there going, absorbing everything. And, uh, and like an hour flew by and I'm like, this could be like we, a six, six part mini series special. like of, yeah. So, uh, and, and really, I, I don't want to, I don't want to give away the big surprise that I'm so proud and excited about, but I, I would say that people should expect to see more of BDJ on our show. Mm, yes. There will be a mm-hmm. reveal, which if I do my editing correctly, will come at the end. So, uh, and I do have some editing to do because we really didn't get into Star Wars talk until pretty far along, but I'll move that up front. So much amazing stuff to talk about. And and it's not that Star Wars isn't amazing. It is. It's just uh, my, I even had a list of things to talk about because I really enjoy talking with this human. Like I enjoy hanging out in his home and, and sipping cocktails and having conversations with him. So it was, well, and I think that, I think, I think that's part of it. I think that's why it made the episode challenging to wedge into a certain time period because you're used to having these like meandering afternoon long kind of discussions. So, uh, but really like I'm super happy with it. I'm really excited to share it with everyone. And um, also I'm super excited that we get to do it as a premiere and and have you in chat kind of sharing along with us or or like asking questions or or whatever uh so i we are planning to do that again i still have to we're recording on saturday we're working on the time you won't see this till tuesday um but on thursday may the 4th we're tentatively targeting 6 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time as the premiere of that episode, which hopefully lets you get done with work stuff, maybe grab a snack or a beverage or whatever, come hang out with us. We'll keep Can the episode. Can I have a beverage? Will you make me a martini for that? Sure. Thanks. We'll keep, I'll cut the episode to 45 minutes to an hour, depending. Like it's much longer than that, but uh, I'll go ahead and chop it down. To that and uh and we'll premiere it and chat and again this is just us testing like how do i phrase this like if you don't want to interact with us that's perfectly fine like we are creating this content putting it out there so that you can consume it when and how you like doing that we just recognize that there even as introverts, we recognize that some people really enjoy that social interaction. And Cammy really loves doing live shows, like live, live video, like live, 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 yeah, I live, love live, at, live at a venue kind of thing. Um, so this is just us tiptoeing, tiptoeing into that live space. So it's just, it's weird to say, so as an introvert, right? I get all of the social interaction when I'm doing a live show, but I don't have to 
directly engage with a lot of people. And so while it's really exhausting after I'm done with it, like I do the live show and then I'm like, I need to sit very still and eat some peanut butter or something afterwards. Like yep. while I am doing it, I am so jazzed. It is just. Yeah, it really, it totally wipes her out, but while it's going, she gets a lot of energy from it. Yeah. The amount of adrenaline and energy that I expend doing that kind of thing. Cause I'm so excited just afterwards. I just need a cookie and a nap. Yeah, and then she just crashes. But um, so anyway, to the point, don your favorite Star Wars garb. We won't be able to see you, so you can you can do whatever I even, you want. I tried to do. It's got some like Princess Leia cinnamon bun stuff thing. going. Um, I paid tribute to it. I didn't do it well, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'm pretty sure it'll be 6 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time on May the 4th. Be with you, Star Wars Day. Uh, but just get, I'll get the I'll get the video edited. I'll post it with the premiere timing, probably Sunday or Monday. So you'll be able to sign up and get alerts for that kind of stuff. And if this is the first time you're hearing of it or seeing it, please. Go to mildly interesting people and hit the hit the notification for the premiere on the YouTube on the YouTubes, and we will see you Thursday uh, in your best keyboarding and typing. Make make Mavis Beacon proud with your live chat. Okay, so that's that's what's going on for May the fourth. I always feel like I have a lisp when I'm saying that. So May the 4th premiere, live chat, Cammy and Rick, uh, watching Brian David Johnson do his thing. Uh, you had a production note. I didn't want to two. hog the whole. Okay. Why don't we go to your two. stuff? Yep. Okay. You know how when we do a normal episode, I started off and I'm like, hi, I'm Cammy Chaos. This is Rick Trosi. I think we need something similar for the production meetings because I feel like I'm trying to start it, but I think it should be you leading the production meeting. So I think you need some kind of way to like consistently bring us into it. Okay. No, I, I agree. I think that's a really good idea. I just don't think I've stumbled into it yet. Like we usually do that. Like, and we find something again, that clicks. Yeah. Yeah. Again, production meeting, like it may seem like we plan this shit and like we said, but it just happens. And like, I can remember from some of our earlier podcasting days, one of the things we happened upon is like in Portland and beyond. And so like, I love we that. will come up, we will come up with some phrasing. Uh, but I do think that I, I am willing to take on the responsibility of leading the production meeting as I should as the producer, right? Like okay. you're the showrunner, but I'm the producer. Yeah. I just want you to feel like you can own this show. Cool. Um, and yeah, I just, I, no, that's, fair. I will feel less anxious at the beginning if we find some way for you to be in charge. While we're here, I really have, I don't understand the, this handoff. Like you're, I'm Kimmy chaos. And, and this, this is Rick Chirosi. Uh, can I say Rick Chirosi then? Because we can I, redo this handoff. Yeah, because it's really weird because you're like, and this, and I have to go, I, I can't, do you want me to go, is Rick Chirosi? Like, do you want me to talk about myself in third person? There, well, I can say like, this is, and you can say Rick Chirosi, or I can introduce you. It just feels weird to me when you say, I'm Cammy Chaos, and, Let's try this, this. and, Let's try and this. I don't get to say, I'm Rick Terosi. Kind of you like saying, I'm Rick Terosi. I want you to I be able to say, I'm Rick Terosi. It doesn't matter. It just, I can't, I, I've never asked you, like, what you expect me to say at that point in time. And every time I'm like, fuck. No, you're I right. The, the language makes no sense when I reflect upon it. Um. But I want to, like, I just, I feel like it's so weird just, if I'm like, just think I'm about Cammy it. Chaos, surprise and then surprise I me. Like, okay. I don't, I don't mind you surprising me, but like next time let's not do a, this okay. as, as my cue. Cause I okay. can't, I don't know what to follow there. Okay. That's an See, excellent we're getting move. into the, getting into the this is what production this is issues. For. This is Beacon what this is Harvard. for. It's a production meeting. Get yeah. Stuff done. All right. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. I trust for that. both. Fantastic. Okay. 
My cool. other production note is just more of a, I want everyone to know that we're mildly upgrading or mildly interesting people. One of the pain points for me is that um, I'm a phone addict and I don't like being away from my phone, but it turns That's out true. the iPhone makes amazing camera. What? Right? Wait, whoa. Shh. Not Rick's iPhone. We, oh, Rick this has is what the very... production, production people can know. That's oh, okay. Uh, we use our iPhones as to record as cameras and they work out really well. But um, how are you recording hand? both the episode and holding your phone at the same uh, time, Cammy? I hadn't gotten a new phone in quite some time. And so I decided to reward myself and our production setup. So now my camera just lives, my, my, mm -hmm. my old iPhone, which is not that old, but it is older, just lives there now. It lives as the yep. production camera now. And so it's easier to set up when we're ready to go. And I can have my phone. I don't even need to look at it or turn it on, but just, although I, I am seeing, this is a production meeting. I can share things, right? Sure. It's a production crew. I'm They're part look. of the behind the scenes. Oh. Um, we're, we have an amazing artist who was one of the early guests on our show. Oh. Who is working Oh, yeah. I saw that. I saw that text. I haven't clicked on it yet, though. Uh, should I show it? Should I show the picture? Sure. Yeah. Let's, show, let's get an opinion. We need your opinion. Ah, no. Go over, 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 over. There you go. You got a little ring light glare. Yeah. But there we go. How's that? Yes. Yeah, that's better. Um, nice. So that is the, according the to upgrade. Kat, that's the rough draft. This yeah. is the very rough draft. I think my only my only off the cuff initial feedback is it needs to be nested a little bit more. Like the the letting is a little wide for my taste. I want to get this tattooed. and maybe and maybe kerned a little tighter. But like yeah, just tighten it up. I would like but yeah, it's... please please give her that feedback. But I love yeah. this direction. Cool. Um, and it feels old timey. Like you, production crew. Like so, you, production getting crew. Back, getting back to the production meeting. Sorry, I'm so excited about this direction <sighs> that Cat yeah. is taking our logo. This is production meeting now. Yeah, it's Cat Miller, who was one of our very first guests. She's also an amazing designer and visual yes. artist. And wow. Things. I'm seriously want to get, like, when this is done, I, I seriously... Do you think I want to get it tattooed? You're addicted to tattoos. I've been getting tattooed since I was 19. Yeah. You want to know when I've been getting tattooed since? No. Since never. <laughs> I have spent, wow. I have now spent more of my life with tattoos than without. Yeah, that's how it works. Mm -hmm. You're a young, crazy kid getting the tattoos all over the place. I mean, to be fair, the last time I got a tattoo was less than a year ago, but yes, it was a really you're good tattoo. A, you're still a young, crazy kid. That one actually, like the finer work on that is pretty amazing. He did. Wow. He did an amazing job. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, cool. Did you have another enough? This is not a tattoo meeting. This is a production meeting. Did you have it's another? A, it's a production meeting about my tattoo. I have my, oh. I have my pen. No, I had three notes. One of them we handled uh, while we were talking about it, and the other two I brought up. And then the cool. third I shared in as a response to having my phone available. So, no, I'm good. What do you have? You're good? Okay. Uh, I only have a few things. Okay. Uh, one, a reveal for the production crew, uh, thanks to our senior management production crew guy, Mahesh. He needs uh, a better title. Yeah. yeah, we'll come up with it. But uh, Mahesh suggested, he's like, look, you're doing really well with less than a minute content. Like, that's working. You're doing really well with long form content, but you might need something in between. So we're testing an additional format that we're calling, wait for it, Mildly interesting moments that will I'm so be so glad you liked that name. That will be it. Will be like three to five minute ish kind of. So it's it's not like 
you know, scrolling through the shorts or the TikToks. It's you're gonna have to like you're gonna have to dedicate a few minutes of your life to watching it. But hopefully it's a part where you're like, oh, I would have never watched that interview with that person, but because of this little moment, I feel like I want to learn more about them. Or that person's super interesting. I'm really glad I shared that moment with them and I am done. Fine. Whatever. We're just like, there. you can only cram so much into a minute. And the shorts, like I love the shorts. I love producing the shorts. I love editing the shorts. I love their like jumpy and weird. And I put in stupid animation that I love uh, that takes me back to my flash days. But you can only wedge so much into that time frame. So what we're trying to do is do justice to the content we're capturing without forcing you to sit through long form to get to that. So we're going to test that. We want your feedback on that. Please comment, like, dislike, whatever you want to do, but just like give us some feedback on that. Because if that's working for you, there are more than enough mildly interesting moments in a lot of the conversations that we have. So that's that. So that's the new format. First one will, of course, star Mahesh. It's already been released. It came out on Sunday. If you haven't seen it, go back. Go back on your feed and look at Sunday. And if you're like, look, I don't have mildly interesting people in my feed, that's because you haven't subscribed. Click the subscribe button. And then... That, that was every- very... That was very angry. You're blaming them for not having subscribed yet. You could just... They're the production crew. How is the production crew not subscribed? I just i just feel like Co- Coach Rick doesn't need to be so aggressive. And we could just be like, hey, production crew, we would love it if you subscribed. I'm Please. just saying, you're getting all the inside details before anyone else. The least you could do is maybe help us out with a little clicky on the subscription thing thingamajigger. Don't feel obligated. Like, if you don't do it, I just won't like you. That's how it is. I'll like you anyway. I mean, so I'll like you balance. more if you subscribe. She's returning I will like balance. you more, but... She's returning balance to the force. By the way, did I mention on May the 4th? Okay, never mind. Um, um, wait, do you think ser- Do you think I'm the dark seriously. side or the dark side of the force? I, I think you're like Luke. Like Luke I can channel re- both sides of the force? No. No, Luke, Jedi Luke, or Last Jedi Luke, where he's like, I really like wearing black, but I, I do. I, I embrace the good side of the Force. Like I, I feel think like that's, I'm, that's I feel like are. I am the good side of the Force. You, what is you? What do you call it when I get upset? My injustice bone. Uh, you have an inflamed, in injustice gland. Yes, it's, justice gland. Yes, justice it's inflamed. Gland. Yeah. I just I get. Yeah. You have an I, over overclocked sense of justice. So yes. But but like like I always think of the scene with the big radar dish where like Luke is meeting up with Vader in Return of the Jedi and they're both standing mm-hmm. there wearing black. Like you're the you're the Luke with the with the black. He's got the best wardrobe in that movie. I'm more like, except for that camo thing. The camo no, thing, the camo riding count. speeder bikes, that's crazy. So. I am slowly transitioning my entire wardrobe to basically dress like a, a Jedi, but in black. Cool. I, I don't, I didn't mean to, but I realize now that that is exactly what I'm doing with all of my big flowy linen garments. Nice. So I'm going to own that. I'm going to embrace it. Cool. Did we mention we're Star Wars fans Star, and we're going Star to be Wars. doing a, a premiere with a live Star, chat Star on Wars. May the 4th? Star um, Wars? So I've covered, I'm checking the new format off the list. I've covered that. The okay. last, oh, oh these are kind of tied. So the last thing I wanted to do is share stats with people. Oh, yeah. our, sta- our, our stats are down uh, on the YouTube side. And I think... The, as near as I can tell, it's just because our shorts haven't been. You know where performing. our stats are up? Where? Facebook. People love the reels on Facebook. 
that's a question. Like, do we need a Facebook page for stuff? Like, are people on the on the Facebooks and would appreciate a page or something? We are th- we are starting a Substack for like monthly. Here are all the videos we did during the month. And uh, not we're, the shorts. We have like been planning the, to launch an actual site as well. Yeah, we need to we need to do that too. But um, oh, this production meeting just turned into a lot of work we have to do. Well, that's what production meetings are for. So, um, so yeah, like I think is our shorts aren't performing terribly well. Like there was a while there where they were doing great, and it. Trust me, we've been testing a ton of different things to figure out, like, does this make a short perform better, like when we post it or when we engage or whatever? I want to make a short of you making the high maintenance martini. Okay, but where do we put that? I don't know. Yeah. Well, and that's like, I've been thinking about because I'll be honest, there are some shorts where I've done some like really amateur animation stuff, but I'm really fucking proud of it's the so stupid cute. animation. I, love it. I really like it. It entertains me. I love me the, the new floating head of Ron Funches that you released. Yeah. So there are a few of those. There's like the Tetris one. There's the Nick Sticker one. There's the uh, Mount Rushmore one. There's the Ron Funches one. I think I'm just going to bind those up into I regret the Mount Rushmore one every day because I'm constantly like changing like, every day I'm like man I should have included this person on that list yeah, but I should that's have included the, that's that that's person about. on the list it was that's very why. challenging there are so many amazing that, people that I didn't include yeah that's what that's for so uh we can always come back to it like okay every maybe we do it after every season of hot ones we like be do would you like to redo your Mount Rushmore of hot ones. Okay. But it's okay, okay if I choose people that were in the past because there's this one I'm not gonna get into it. This is not this is not the format. This is not the time and place for this. Please continue. Okay, we're on to metrics. So let me open Yay, up this window. Me- metrics. Let me squeak my chair. Cammy uh-huh. loves the metrics. She can't get it. So uh two hundred and seven. YouTube subscribers. I don't know I don't why feel like I'm we, really... It's I about one a day. One a day since I don't feel like we ever time. properly celebrated 200. That's because I'm waiting for 250. I think 250 mm-hmm. is the mm-hmm. celebration point. Because that means we're a quarter of the way there to 1,000, which is like the magic thing. So uh, okay. slow growth on subscriber base, which is fine. Like, uh, not a big deal. We're nearing 100 videos posted and if folks don't realize this last thursday was the three month mark for us so we've been working on the podcast for three months posting stuff for three months so that gives you a good indication like 207 subscribers within a quarter of a year time period so if we can continue on that growth rate we will meet the 1,000 subscribers by middle of 2024. So that's kind of where we are. I have a stat to share. We have 197 followers on Instagram. Oh, great. Thanks. I wanted to include Instagram this time. Um, So good. Like, you can follow us on Instagram. It's just mildly interesting mildly people. Mildly interesting people. All one word, no underscores, none of that jazz. Uh, so yeah, as I said, our shorts views are really down significantly um, over this week, and I feel like that's probably two things at play. I assume it's the algorithm because we've been doing this for three months and the algorithm's like, we're not going to give you free views anymore. You're going to have to work for them. We just gave you a taste of what you have potentially at your disposal. And I think the other part, quite frankly, is the weather's been really nice. It has been so nice. I I think people who... I hate how nice it's been. I think people who generally are engaged with our content are probably not on their phones or on their computers. They're outside. Uh, The other stat we gave you last week which is, again, down, uh, only 36,000 
views over the last week. So we're down, uh, I'm sorry, last week. No, last 28 days. So the, you know, the window keeps moving, right? So we are down about a thousand views on this new window uh, in terms of watch time. I think we're also down a little bit. We're at 308 hours of watch time over the last 28 days. Uh, so that's kind of where stuff is there. Uh, podcast, I will check our podcast stats for you just so you have those. On the audio version of the podcast, we are, it's just loading. We are at 894 plays, so 894 downloads inching ever closer to a thousand down. Like I really want to celebrate a thousand downloads. Um, I think the other metric to share there is where are we in terms of episodes? So let's just look at episode rankings. Yeah. Uh, obviously our most popular episode, which is obviously our first episode with the guest is at 62 right now. And we're really, we, I think where we have talked about wanting to celebrate is when our guests hit both a hundred views on their video and a hundred listens on their podcast we think yes. that's a great milestone to celebrate so we're we're inching closer to that we're we're two-thirds of the way there and uh and i think i think that episode has already surpassed 100 views online so the mika one just, i think so yeah nice. let me double check but uh i will double check that one i think she i think she eclipsed that pretty early we need to bring her back right. to record her five mildly interesting questions. Yes, we do. But that's where we are with stats, folks, just keeping you in the loop. Uh, yes, Mika's uh, YouTube episode has more than 100 views. So we're just waiting on the podcasty part for that one. Um, anything, and that's that's all I've covered. So traffic is down uh, mostly because of shorts. They're just not performing the same way we saw them perform early on. And uh, and we're trying that new content format that's only like three to five minutes long. So and do big... you do you think we need a Facebook page? Oh, yeah. Let us know. Like, would you engage with it on Facebook? Would that help remind you that we're doing stuff? Like, if that's a value to you, that's easy for us to do. We just don't really do that much with Facebook pages anymore. So uh, let us know if that would be valuable. Anything else? My voice is going for some reason. So yeah, you need to stop talking. Yeah, for sure. I need to go back to my normal self and not talk. <laughs> for like <laughs> the next 12 hours. For, for days, days on <laughs> end. Okay. Well, thank you, production crew. Always great to see you. Love having you here. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Like every Tuesday, it's the production meeting. If you got time to show up, got time to provide feedback, we always are happy to have you here and following along with the journey. We'll chop some of this stuff up into shorts so you can consume it. And uh, yeah, anything else before we sign out, Kimmy? Nope. All right. So we're all good. Talk to you soon. Enjoy Bye. your week. We'll see you later. Bye.